question is, we live here in Riverside, California, and we're looking at property in Wrightwood, and there's lots up there I want to buy. And my concern is that I've done construction on my house. I built this house here, but I'm concerned about the foundation. And when I put that together with, I want to use what they used in uh, Fairview in Virginia with the foam. I'm afraid that it'll be off a sixteenth, a half inch, and then when you go to place the dome on top of it, how? how I don't know how. I don't know how. And then I was, I was wondering if you guys have a contractor that could come out here and just build the foundation. That's my question. Okay. Um, you grab that, Dennis. Okay. No, we don't have someone that can build your foundation. We do have somebody, and you're looking at them on the screen there, Derek, that could fly out there, on myself included, you could fly us out there and we could lay that thing out for um, a contract. Really? Out. But I'm going to say to you that you shouldn't need that. The contractor, I know we scare a lot of country contractors when we say, how accurate do you have to be? And we say, well, you know, get that 60 to a quarter inch. You, you're going to be on the, the, the concrete just doesn't really want to stay in one spot. It wants to create pressure on the forms and it's never. Right. Hey, Dennis, let me interrupt you. You got you muted. muted. Somehow. Um, yeah, I've seen a couple of dome projects actually where I have uh, been to them and they've been off as much as a couple inches on each wall. The dome will still be fine as long wow. as it's not too crazy. Obviously, you want it like any foundation, the more accurate you can get it, the better, but it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect and it will still work. In fact, um, as far as poured foundations, I haven't been to one where it's really close. You know, I mean, a few of them get pretty good, but yeah, it's not... Uh, Sorry, Dennis, I didn't mean to take over there, but it looked like it got muted on you. So I'll let you kind of finish what you're saying. No, that was, that's fine. It, it's a situation where we stress, you know, some accuracy in that foundation, but it's real hard just to control concrete. So yes. uh, getting, getting it level is more important than if you're off in the, in the radius and stuff, but you, you shouldn't have that. Uh, the forms, we've got a, a, the guy up in, in uh, Oregon that just did, huge amount of concrete uh, stuff on his foundation, poured concrete walls, um, very kind of, I'll say intricate because there's a garage, there's terrain, there's steps in the foundation. You need somebody that will go on board with you and say, yeah, I can do that. You gotta, you gotta have some, somebody that's got a comfort level in what you're dealing with on the property too, from the standpoint of uh, level foundations or sloped hillsides, but they're out there. And it's, the problem is contractors today are booked up. You've got a problem in California with all these houses that have burned eight, nine, I don't know what your number is. I've heard 8,000, 9,000 houses. The contractors are busy. And that's really- Well, I would be owner builder. I would, I would do it all myself. I built all my okay. foundation. I, I dug my forms. I, when, I, when I did my um, house, it's a, it's a wood floor house. So I built the double forms. I did all my rebar. I did the sewer. I did the, elect, uh, the, the water, the electrical, the framing, the finishing, and so, everything. I painting, so stucco. Here's the situation. And and you, you, you know, you're the one that you got to learn and i'm scared with all that i'm no, scared no, no, no. about that that we'll give you a number we'll give you a, a number i mean when we work out these these numbers for the dome we carry it out to four decimal points. but you're you're gonna look at that and you're gonna create That's aircraft something. tolerance well yeah but you don't have to get that <laughs> but we can show you the tricks in how you do it how you lay this thing out because there's a lot of cases where you need a center point. You can't lose that center point. And then from that point, you can string a line across and meet either in the center of the strut or the, from the point of the, or where the strut's supposed to be, or that should say the edge of the panel's supposed to be. 
and Got we it. can show you how to lay that out so you're not off. And it may Beautiful. it might take you a few more hours to do it, but we we have consultation time on FaceTime. We'll do a FaceTime okay. with you. So that's what we're trying to do with more like this, uh, video, Zoom room, plus FaceTime. We, we handle a lot of people that way that are like you. How can I lay it out well? And instead of right. you sitting there on the trying to scratch your head and figure out why it's three inches off, we can stop you yes. from being three inches off. So. And the, I like the foam block system that you have there where you can just lay the rebar sure. in there and tie it yep. together and put it together. We've got a lot of and foundations then, that are the foam block. Yes. And I like that also because it insulates too and you leave them in place. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's a good system. You get like double. You get your foundation and you get your insulation from the snow because up there it snows. It's uh, uh, 5,600 feet. Okay. Yeah. But down here right now, we're sitting in 60 degree weather right now here in Riverside. Yeah. Well, ICFs are definitely growing in popularity because like you said, they're just, they're a good, they're a good option. So, and they're easy to do for people doing it themselves, you know, um, at least until it comes time and to pour, then you might want some help. But <laughs> when you do the pour, when you right. fill up, but yeah, in other words, it's not bad. So. Great. Right. Thank you. Awesome. Well, thank you. Perfect.